So let's bring in Teresa Payton, former White House CIO and CAEO of Fort Alice Solutions. She's joining us today from downtown Toronto. Great to have you on the program, Teresa, and thank you for taking a bit of time for us today. Thanks for having me on. What do you make of this story? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, obviously there's a he said, she said going on here and kind of my heart goes out to both of them because they've had a longstanding relationship. But as it relates to a recording device in the Situation Room at the White House, if that is true, if indeed that conversation was recorded in the Situation Room, that is definitely in breach of classified handling um, and the training that each and every person who works at the White House and has a security clearance receives. I'm curious now what you think the result is going to be now of this breach. Well, there are a lot of different legal remedies um, that can or cannot be taken at this point, and it's really going to be up to a combination of Department of Defense, who puts together sort of the classified rules and how things are to be handled, as well as White House counsel to decide what actions they choose to take. It could be everything from uh, a warning to the file, to uh, revoking a security clearance, to recommending not having a future security clearance. It could also include penalties. So it's really going to be kind of up to them to decide how far the line she crossed and whether or not they decide to take action. There will also have to be some type of an evaluation to see was her device actually compromised when she brought it in to make that recording. We all know that uh, Chief of Staff Kelly had an issue where one of his devices was compromised. He did not bring it into classified rooms at the White House, but in this case she did. And so the question remains, um, did she bring in a compromised device, not actually knowing that when she made the recording. You were a chief information officer in the uh, White House of uh, George W. Bush back in the day. And I'm curious, you know, for those of us who are not in the know, as you are in the know, the situation room and, and how difficult that is to sort of, number one, be invited in, bring in some sort of recording device. I mean, I, I gather there should be sort of very strict protocols for this kind of thing, Teresa. There are strict protocols, and for starters, you can't just walk into the West Wing as any employee unescorted unless you have a special type of a badge. With that badge, you don't just get issued that badge. You go through a series of training. Um, you also sign uh, documents saying that you understand the training and the duty of care you have to the information you may be exposed to, the things you may hear in the hallway, um, and the business being conducted on behalf of the nation. Um, the next thing is, is when you walk in the door, you can't can't miss the lockers. There are lockers there, and you have been instructed in your security training, in the documents you signed, and there are signs reminding you that everything from work and personal tablets, laptops, smartphones, as well as potentially fitness trackers, smart uh, watches, anything that talks to the internet, anything that can record audio and or video has to be turned into these lockers. And you know that. Uh, do people make mistakes and forget? Possibly. Could you sneak something in? Maybe. Nobody's frisking and patting everybody down as they're going in. But it's just understood. You took the training. You signed the documents. You understand your duty of care. And you're not just going to sneak things in. You raise a great point because, you know, there are those who say the Trump administration, you know, uh, has been sloppy and perhaps didn't expect to win. And so some of these people who came in were amateur and didn't understand sort of the importance of things like national security and, and the need for uh, complete privacy. But you're saying, you know, training is given. People are made very aware of what is at stake here. Yeah, you sign a usage document that's very clear around when you're issued a government device, the care and duty for that device to report it stolen or missing, um, as well as once you start to get into having uh, classified access to classified rooms, documentation, conversations, video conferences, uh, you're giving regular training, not just one-time training and sort of the throes of the moment, but you're giving constant reminders and training on what your duty of care is and how to conduct yourself both on grounds and off grounds. So for example, you finish a briefing, you're not supposed to leave grounds, go to a coffee shop and talk like you're all cute and you're hiding things like some kind of James Bond movie. Um, so you're taught sort of how that duty of care extends both on grounds and off grounds. The other challenge the Trump administration has had, Teresa, is sort of leaks, leaks, and more leaks, something the president himself has been very upset over and has called out. Who knows? There could be other recordings as well. How serious is this, in your point of view? The idea that staff thinks it's okay to sneak in devices is serious, and this is where 
uh, retraining um, and reconfirmation of these commitments is going to be incredibly vital to not just the administration on the go forward, but all departments and agencies should take note from what has happened here and use this opportunity to remind employees and contractors that if you are on premises and you are um, conducting business on the classified side, that recording devices are not allowed even under the whistleblower program. Um, and so that's they need to be very clear on the whistleblower program is there for a protocol and a reason. Here's how you use it because you don't want to stop people from using that program when it's necessary, but at the same time still remind people what your duty of care is to our nation's secrets and our nation's business. One last quick thing. Do you think Omarosa is nervous today? I mean, could she in fact find herself charged? You know, I, I, it's very possible she's nervous, and clearly she was nervous going into that room, which is why she felt the need to record the conversation. She felt like um, she was, you know, I, I I take her at her word. I've I've actually watched her, and it sounds like she was um, actually frightened and a little bit spooked as to why she was being called in there. Um, so I do understand how she feels, and I do sympathize with her. But at the same time, we all um, have a duty of care. If you have classified access to guard that um, and to make sure that you follow the rules. Teresa Payton joining us from Toronto. She is the former White House Chief Information Officer. She served in the presidency of George W. Bush. Nowadays, the CEO of Fort Alice Solutions. Great to have you on the program and great to have you here in Canada with us. Yeah, I absolutely love Canada. Thanks for having me on.